Hi everyone, this is a quick introduction to part two. You can see the completed uh, gun and crew in front of you. Um, I'm going to be taking you through some steps from where I start to work on the black parts of the uniform and we've got all sorts of other things, metallics and uh, talking about the gun and a number of other things in this video. I did want to make one correction. Um, I said in the first part of this that um, the excellent reference books by Ken Trotman Publishing were done by Stephen Summerfield, but they are not. Um, they're done by, I believe his name is David Wright. Anyway, I'll uh, put a picture up so you can see the cover of the books. And then we'll go into the step-by-step. -step. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, guys, so I'm um, going to go and do those uh, black parts next. Um, I've just got out a few different sort of blacks or dark greys here. I've got more, um, and what I can always do is if I can always add some, a little bit of off-white or something like that, or, or, or a light grey in with them if I want any more highlights. But uh, this one's a green no, grey green. Um, I thought I might use that on the woolen crest. Uh, black grey. I'll probably use that on the uh, fabric parts. German grey, which has got a bit more sort of blue in it. That you can't really tell through the bottle very well. Um, I'll probably use that on the helmet and the boots. Um, and this military grey from Reaper High Density. Um, yeah, that might be a highlight for the um, helmet, perhaps, and the boots. See how it goes. Um, back when I've done a bit more. Okay, I've done the blacks and greys. Um, at the moment, it's a little bit uh, distracting because of the wash that's still shining through. Um, I find it really important to give a really good, um, very matte varnish when I'm finished because some washes, well, some of the ones that I use anyway, give them uh, a slightly glossy finish and that distracts um, the eye from the painting. You're looking into creases and seeing something shiny, which... <coughs> Which you wouldn't in, in in if these were, you know, real life. Um, so once I've got rid of all that shiny sort of effect, it should <coughs> look a bit better. But um, yeah, you can see that the woolen crests are a bit lighter, and um, I've done all the other black and grey bits. Now the boots will probably get some um, a dusting of um, uh, the the. Uh, paint that I use on my bases I'll lightly dust some onto the boots for a bit of slight weathering effect as well. Um, <clears throat> now, next up is to do the sword scabbards and for that I'm, I'm going to use um, get that back. There you go. Uh, Vallejo model colour flat, flat brown. Yep so going back in with that I'll do that next. Okay, I've done the uh, sword scabbards um, in flat brown. Unlike a lot of other armies uh, that had black scabbards or um, uh, or steel ones, yeah, these guys apparently had a brown leather scabbards. Um, so yeah, I, pay, I just used um, used one of my bigger brushes. Um, just sometimes it's easier on the hands. This is a size twelve. I think it is. It comes to a fine point, so uh, twelve. Yeah, so big synthetic brush, but I made sort of like quite small strokes to get a bit of texture on the leather as well. Now the next thing um, I'm going to do, go back to a smaller sable brush, is do some. Try and do like I mentioned in that first video. I'm going to try and give the impression of some eyes. So I've got my brown liner here, which is very thin and dark paint, and some creamy ivory, both from Reaper, and um, see if we can get some impression of eyes in there. Um, 
I may, if it, I fudge it up uh, in any way, I can always grab some sort of perhaps the mid-tone of the flesh or something like that and touch up um, the eyelids either above or below just to get it looking right again. A bit trial and error with that. All right, I'll go and do that now. And um, it's going to be hard to show you probably because I don't know where it will show when it's done on the camera, but uh, we'll give it a go. Okay, I've done the eyeballs. Um, I used, uh, where is it? That's the Reaper brown liner there. Some creamy ivory there. And a bit of flesh to touch up. Uh, it's barely... Um, Oh, there you go. You can just make out a bit of an impression of some eyes there. Sometimes, it's not always possible, but sometimes the best way is to get them looking in a direction, then you, it's, um, you're not having to put so many dots in the eyes. They're just You could probably have one in each. If they're looking over to one side or something like that. But you don't want everyone's eyes sort of glancing furtively about um so yeah you can't do it with all of them so sometimes you yeah you'll need to put dots in the corners of both eyes so I, I put a black line and then trying to make two tiny white dots it's usually at the white dot stage where you need a bit of touching up because it doesn't always go where you, precisely where you want it to because it is um such fiddly work but um yeah again once again i use the the number two um Recab sable brush for that. All right, <clears throat> just trying to think if there's any other regular acrylic stuff I need to do. I think what I'm going to do next is move on to the metallics. Righto, guys, uh, metallics next. Now, there's quite a bit of uh, little brass details to do. We've got a uh, buckle on the belt, we've got buttons on the lapels, on the cuffs. Uh, details on the sword, plus brass bits on the helmet, little straps, and and even the edging on the peak. Um, so that's going to take a while. And I'm going to do that with um, scale colour, elven gold. Yeah, elven gold. Oro Elfico, as they call it. Uh, I think it's what? SC74. Four, I think it says, a bit worn out there, but um, really nice colour, really nice metallics, as I've said before about the scale colour stuff. And with the cannonball that the dude's holding over here on the end, um, I'm going to give it a little touch of this. This is um, really nice um, for the silvers and um, steels and stuff. This is the um, metal colour range. It is, it's still acrylic paint, um, but it's different from the regular uh, model color um, metallics um, it's finer it's thinner um, but the thinness don't let that put you off it just goes on easier it's easier to control it's not thick and gloopy but the particles in it are super fine um, so you don't get that sort of glittery like exaggerated glittery effect that you can do with some metallics Although, you know, it has to be said, a lot of them these days are uh, improving, the, different paint companies are improving their metallics and making the actually bit that makes it sparkle, those tiny little particles, a lot finer and smaller for, for scale modelling and war game painting. Um, yeah, so there'll probably be a touch of that on the top of that cannonball over there, just to let, so it's not just straight up black. So I'm going to go and play with these metallics now. Um... I am going to use synthetic brushes for this because um, I don't want to ruin um, my better um, sable ones. So I'm just going to use some fine, um, um, yeah, one like this, a sort of synthetic one, size one. Um, make little dots with that pretty easy. Um, okay, I'll crack on and come back when they're looking, uh, got all their bling on. Okay, <clears throat> here they are with uh, all their brass shiny bits on. Um, yeah, it took a little while, but um, I just want to say, if, if you're looking at the um, 
have a look at the photos on the um, Piano War Games website for these guys. The, uh, the painting on them on that website is phenomenal. It is just superb. Now, I don't know whether they've, um, because obviously these were um, STLs originally, and whether they printed a larger master and painted a larger master, you know, a bit like um, the Perrys do with the producing a three-up first um, before they produce a plastic set. Um, but if they are actually 28 mil, the painting is just superb. It's just phenomenal finish. Um, it really is very high display quality painting. So, and a fantastic place to go for your inspiration for your paint scheme. I mean, I've looked there, but also worked with my customer because he's got books and it's always good to go back to see what, um, other sources say. Um, just to check um, that you get in it as right as you can anyway. But, um, yeah, phenomenal painting by uh, the guys on that, on that web website, the Piano War Games guys. And as I say, I don't know whether they're, they're actual 28s or whether they're a larger master. Because um, obviously being 3D, you can print it at all sorts of scales. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Um, as you can see, there's a few fiddly bits on the helmets. You've got the banding, sort of like a V shape coming there and around the helmet. Um, you've got the bits on the, the sword. Um, little brass buttons on the side of their gaiters. Buttons on their cuffs, button down the, the front of the lapels and on the shoulders, shoulder straps and the little rim on the edge there. Um, and also, I've used some of that, um, as I showed you before, the uh, gunmetal grey from the Vallejo uh, metal colour. I've used that, there we go, on the cannonball. And um, all this will get a matte varnish, and hopefully that will pull it all together a bit better so the eye is not distracted by unnecessarily shiny bits. Um, yeah. So quite happy with how those are looking. Now, let's come back here a bit. And here is the gun that they're going to be serving. Now, the light is not brilliant here. And you're just, it's visually distracting with all the colours on the palette. Okay. Um, let's see if I can get this to a better spot, perhaps, for viewing. Mm, maybe not. Um, okay, now the Wurtemberg guns, according to um, the reference material we looked at, were pretty much a natural kind of wood colour, or a, just a brown wood colour. They didn't um, paint them a particular colour. It looks more of a natural wood finish, brown wood finish, with a brass uh, coloured gun. Um, so, and a leather, um, like a leather seat there, which I've just sort of tried to make look a bit more realistic by stippling on some different shades of leather colour on there. Now, all the metal work on the gun carriage itself um, was pretty much black, like a, you know, like a kind of like a pot belly black you'd get on a wood stove, um, blackened metal. Um to keep it from rusting and that sort of thing. Now, with the gun, I've put a little bit of uh, dark wash around the, the port, the firing port there, and um, drew the barrel out a bit more, a bit further down, and blackened that out, and a bit around the muzzle, and all the metal work. Now these were uh, done set. The wheels were done separately the main carriage and the gun was done separately and then um, put together <clears throat> so for the wood finish um, I started with um, Panzer Aces new wood as my base color and then I applied a couple of glazes or washes um, of this game color smoky ink now you could use any sort of wood wash or brown ink um, or one of the excellent um, 
contrast or express or speed type paint things that work for wood anything like that would go really well just to pick out the grain because it has got the grain sculpted into it quite nicely so that's how i got that now with the uh, metal the the sort of the blackened metal i i basically painted it in with uh, vallejo black gray and then what i've done is i've just gone back with um, some of this this gunmetal appropriately called gunmetal gray and sort of touched on little bits just to highlight it you know you can just see a little glint on the top of these parts that would perhaps get a bit where the edges of the rims of the wheels um, you could go a bit further with that um, another option now this um, marks choosing not to put the gun on a base but to have the figures on bases um, serving the gun um, so if it was on a base I'd probably maybe more use or I could use um, and this is an option for you is um, if you want to get a really realistic um, gun metal effect on your black um, let me see if I can get that into focus this is just a this is the problem with one-handed stuff this is a 6b uh, 6b 6b there um, but any soft pencil this is just a Faber and Castell um, 6b drawing pencil but it has very soft um, graphite in it and that is excellent for um, just putting on the edges and highlighting some of the nuts and screws and things like that and giving it that metallic look back again where there might have been a bit of rubbing and things um, really good for that sort of thing so yeah you could you could do it with just this this type of paint or you could you know try a graphite pencil a soft graphite pencil um yeah so there's the gun it's glued together um and what i plan to do now um is with these guys i'm going to go back and work on the base a bit more now the bases are just a simple uh, fine paving sand um, put on top of uh, PVA uh, wood glue and you know often a couple of layers just to hide the the pudding base nicely and and then what I do is I get um, that dark brown that they've got now because the paving sand is actually quite pale um, is I use the Vallejo wash range um, I use uh, the dark brown and um, that just soaks in really nicely. You just load your brush and you dab it on and it soaks into the sand and tints the sand quick as anything and gives it that nice uh, brown look. Now what I do, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to um, take some uh, Vallejo model color tan yellow. And I'm just going to dry brush that over the base and um, and probably just carefully selectively dust a bit onto the boots. Um, I may dust it a bit further up. I do have the option of using, I have a, like a, a teeny weeny uh, little makeup brush that my wife has thrown away and that is very soft and very small and good for those sort of that detailed sort of small areas of weathering like the boots and stuff so that's another trick i could employ and then the base edges um we'll get um clean uh, clean finish with uh german camo black brown fantastic color so useful and versatile okay i'm going to go and uh, tart up those bases now um and show you what they look like when i'm done Okay, guys, here they are with the bases. With that dry brush and the base rims tidied up and a light dusting over the boots of that tan yellow. I'm going to go and put some tufts on now. Okay. 
Okay, here they are with their tufts on. Um, all that's left that I want to do on them now is to uh, put matte varnish on them. Get rid of those shiny bits, uh, as I say, from the washers and things, and give a little bit of protection. Um, now, uh, these are all tufts from Lead Bears Tuff, Tufts. Uh, Lead Bears Tufts. I've used quite a few different ones, actually. Two mil light green, two mil dark green, dark green, which is probably about four mil, uh, six mil green, and light green, which is again probably a four mil. Um, so yeah, just applied those with tweezers. They stick straight on. I don't need any extra glue. They've got a really strong adhesive already in them. And then I just get some scissors, small scissors and I trim around the edges where there's any stray hairs, uh, strands coming over. The base, I like to keep everything contained within the base edge. Just my, the way I like it, keep it nice and tidy. And um, there you go. And we're, so when I put the matte varnish on, um, I tend to want to try and soak some into the tufts as well, just to try and cut back a little bit of the synthetic sheen that you get on the fibres. Um, yeah, along with the varnishing the figure. So, um, so the next stage is I'm going to use this AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish. Getting quite low on it now, um, but it's it's been really good. Just a bit of a shake up, and and it's very thin and goes straight on, and really is very very matte. Not the slightest sheen with it that I can see. Um, yeah, so. As it's getting toward the end of its life, what I do need to watch out for as I apply it is tiny little white flecks of dried varnish, which can form up in the top of the bottle here, um, just from natural sort of residue. Um, as the fresh stuff gets poured out, it can pick up some of these old bits and you can get little flecks of white in it. So I just need to be careful as I get near the, near the bottom of the bottle not to um, catch those bits out. And I sometimes have to take them off the end of the brush. But... That just sort of happens um, probably with a lot of varnishes like this when you're getting near towards the end. So I'm going to go on uh, give these coat of matte varnish and then I'll show you probably these guys around the gun. Uh, I'll probably put a bit of matte varnish on the gun as well. All right, catch you in the next bit. And here's what we end up with when it's all finished. Just lift this tripod up, see if we can tilt it in a bit more and convince it to focus. This is always the challenge. There we go, well done. Camera, looking at it. So there they all are. That's the gun with its wooden carriage. Leathery seat and the black metal effect on the wheels and all the other metal work. I'm not sure where exactly which side they'd go on to serve the gun, but you know, we can put them around. Something like that, I suppose. There they are. Just get them around. Um, I'm not going to put stills up at the end at this time. I may do, um, I'll probably do some, well, I will do some photos um, when I've finished all this lot of word and burgers. So there's how they turned out, guys. Took you through a lot of the process. Um, if you've got any questions or comments, love to hear from you. And um, yeah, 
pleased with how those turned out and um, the matte varnish ties them all together nicely gets rid of all that shininess from the washers and the last part to do from this current batch is to do the mounted officer and his dog which as you can see I've already got undercoated and it's at the base in the flesh and so yeah I've left those to the end to do as a separate thing and then I'll photograph things up all right guys thanks for tuning in I hope you found it interesting see you next time bye for now